we begin, I want you to take a look at the uh, bulletin where the scripture is printed, James 5. You'll notice that uh, this morning there's only one verse, actually it's just a half of a verse, uh, that I have in bold print. But it's, the, it's the passage that I hope that you commit to memory. And I want you to join with me as we begin in that one uh, bold part there. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. <laughs> Most people don't know that uh, in the New Testament, um, the word that's translated in the English as prayer is actually many different words in the original Greek. Supplication, petition, yearning, wishing, uh, all of those types of um, uh, Greek words in the English are just translated as prayer. And 406 times in the New Testament, we have the word prayer. It's an important part of our faith. And in our passage today, it's a little unusual because we have a word in the Greek for prayer, diasis, that is only found 18 times throughout the entire Bible. And it means personal involvement or commitment. So today we have this passage that's not just a prayer, it's a prayer where you are personally and eagerly involved in the situation. And the word for powerful in the New Testament is almost always the same. It's that word dynamis. It's the word that we have dynamite. And dynamic means it's powerful. There's a lot of energy in it. So I want to offer you uh, a paraphrase, uh, if you will. I always said that when I retire, I'm going to create the KSB version of the Bible. Kevin has a version of the Bible. So here's the paraphrase according to the Greek. The personal involvement of a person trying to do the right thing produces an amazing amount of energy. So think about this passage in that way. One thing that I noticed was... Uh, uh, when uh, Herb was talking to you about uh, education, uh, he asked you uh, to uh, close your eyes uh, and imagine Sunday school. And I heard a couple people out here say, what, what do you think? They said, food. I mean, that's interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Sunday school, food. So today, let me try to make you think about food so that you'll remember the three points of the sermon. <laughs> to 
to people who love one another. Now that all seemed to make a lot of sense to me. And if you think about prayer, you think about it as a coming together with God and being with your beloved. I also think about this as unity. Think about love as unity. You are moving toward God in prayer. Prayer is your approach to God. In 1957, when they had to come up uh, with a new name for the Congregational Christian Churches and the Evangelical and Reformed Churches, they decided on the name United Church of Christ because they wanted to imply that they were uniting people because people loved one another, that we wanted to be a united church and not a church that believed we have our own little thing over here, but that we embrace everyone. Think about prayer as a practice and think about what prayer as a practice means in your life. Think about Judaism, where every day faithful Jews recite the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. In Islam, there are five prayers that are ritually practiced at different times throughout the day. Those of you who have been to camp have celebrated Vespers. And those are practices that we ritually observe so that we grow closer to God. The world today is pretty detached and we see it in many different ways in our society. We're not allowed to get to know people in various professions because there are, are boundaries and we're not allowed to have uh, what this piece of scripture calls personal involvement or deasis. There's very little of that today. I was reading an article in a business magazine and one of the articles in it was called Elevator Ethics. And it went through a whole series of if you were working on a certain project, you shouldn't talk to anyone in the elevator because you might inadvertently say something that someone else might overhear and it would be a breach of something that the company needed. Or you may reveal something to someone that they would later use against you. Now you know this world of separation because that's the world that we live in with elevator ethics where we have to learn how to be careful and to guard ourselves in what we say. But prayer is a practice. It's moving toward healing and wholeness. Moving toward God. And I want to remind you in our passage today, too, it talks a lot about you will save that person. And I want to remind you that the word to save is also the word for sad, which is used in healing. To, and it means to make someone whole. So today, uh, in our society, we need to practice recovery. We need to treat everyone as if they need healing and wholeness. So, intention. I noticed that part about Elijah, and I want to deal with, the, with perhaps a misunderstanding in this piece of scripture that anything you pray for, you're going to get. When I was in Plum Hill, they must have read James 5. It was a rural uh, congregation. Well, nearly everyone was in farming, or they were connected to someone who was a farmer, and they would regularly ask me to pray for rain, particularly on their farm. <laughs> and uh, you'll notice you have the uh, saying there about Elijah being able to control rain because he believed in it. But I want you to look at um, this idea of healing in a little different way today in terms of being sad for what ails us. Because all of us have had the frustrating situation of really being personally involved with someone and they don't get better. And we, we pray for them. And we all know that that happens. And so, what I want to do is I want to quote a theologian who talked about this passage, and he said, if you learn to practice prayer, you will, heal, you will heal the illnesses of anger, of sorrow, 
of insecurity, of sadness, of hatred, of loneliness, of unhealthy desires. And so whenever we pray in Christ's name we pray, we're saying as if Christ would be praying. We're praying things that we're trying to get ourselves into the mind of Christ and pray those things. So in the Lord's <coughs> Prayer, for instance, we say, May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That prayer. It's an intention to search out the will of God and apply it for the salvation and the healing of the people. And it helps us to see what we really want what we learn in our hearts. And we can heal these things. Prayer's intention is to draw near to God. And finally, the E, the experience. Um, the peace of God is an experience that we have that goes beyond our understanding. And we have that definition of peace thanks to Paul. And if you'll notice, a lot of times in our liturgy at a memorial service, we always close with that as a benediction. May the peace of God, which goes beyond any of our human understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus our Lord. But what most people don't know is that comes from Paul's letter to the fourth chapter, where he adds this. So don't worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. So that whole experience of peace for Paul came in prayer. It's a peace that goes beyond our ability to understand. I believe that that's been my experience. I know it's been the experience of many other people. It's an important part of a lot of the recovery work. And uh, last uh, Sunday evening, we uh, observed our first uh, Warrior's Journey Home uh, healing circle for veterans at Mocha House. And those are always, uh, believe me, real experiences where people experience healing of sorrows, of misunderstandings. And one of the things that Warrior's Journey Home does is it encourages veterans to write their own poetry and write their own words out. And that um, process, that practice, that intention of wanting to be healed, that intention of drawing into God's presence is very healing. We also, uh, a couple of years ago, took a um, youth mission trip to uh, San Diego. Uh, or no, it was uh, Los Angeles, uh, when we went to a, uh, a community center that helped um, uh, people in the community uh, get out of gangs. And uh, one of the ways that they helped people to get in touch with themselves, to be healed and to find wholeness, was to sit down and write their thoughts and to write poetry. And so we could say that self-expression is a healing force. That prayer is powerful and effective self-expression, which is good for your soul. There's an old proverb that says, turn your face to the sun and the shadows will be behind you. I think that's good wisdom when it comes to our experience of prayer as peace and as healing. And the model of the United Church of Christ, that they may all be one. It's from John 14, and it's in the middle of a prayer of Jesus at the Last Supper. A couple of years ago, um, my son and I were very happy because um, the Cleveland Cavaliers signed Shaquille O'Neal 